Uh, right now, I want to welcome to the program the president of the National Rifle Association, Mr. Jim Porter. Jim, how are you, sir? Great, Cam. How are you? I am excellent. Thanks for coming on the program. Good. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you as well. And, you know, I was looking at your uh, latest column on the Daily Caller, No Freedom's Enemy. Uh, and I got to tell you, Jim, I mean, I am a history lover. And if you are a uh, Second Amendment advocate, uh, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, you probably at least have an appreciation uh, for history, but it's not just about knowing this nation's history. It's also, uh, you know, one of the things we got to learn is is the history of the gun control movement in this country. Well, you know, Cam, uh, you go back to uh, to 1968 when these uh, when when the federal government passed its first uh, criminalization of uh, legal and lawful firearm possession. Um, you know, back then the 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 uh, the predecessors to the Brady campaign, the Handgun Control Inc. people, uh, they were they were running a false flag operation. Then you know they were talking then they were talking about wanting to uh, confiscate and uh, outlaw the possession of any handguns. Mm-hmm. And then they went to uh, uh, these uh, so-called Saturday Night Specials. They wanted to disarm. Uh, 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 all of the folks uh, in the inner cities that uh, couldn't afford a very expensive firearm. Uh, and from that, uh, then they changed their name along the line to uh, the so-called Brady Campaign, and their, uh, their intent was to ban all uh, semi-automatic weapons. So it, it's clear that their interest in, uh, in their agenda is to ban the ultimate banning of all firearms by uh, and possession of firearms by by law-abiding citizens, and uh, that's what's behind all of this incremental uh, legislation that they that they push. Uh, I mean, some of their legislation was so draconian that they supported out in California that uh, the very uh, Anti gun uh, uh, Governor Brown wouldn't even sign. Yeah, no, you're, you're you're right about that, and and you know you're right. It's they 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 push for what they think they can get, and then some, uh, and they constantly keep trying to move that ball forward. And you know it's fascinating. I, I remember not long ago I read a quote by uh, by Pete Shields, who at the time was the head of Handgun Control Incorporated, which has now become the uh, Brady campaign. I think right. he said this in 1981. Uh, he said, "We don't have any." desire uh, uh, to, to pass any additional laws related to uh, long guns, related to rifles or shotguns. We are concerned about handguns only. Uh, and, the, you know, just a little bit more than a decade later, Jim, this same organization, brand new name, but same organization was going out there trying to uh, ban semi-automatic rifles, and they have not stopped since. Well, they, they again, this is a false flag operation. When they sit there and, and have the gall to say that uh, all they want is sensible gun control, what... The way you have to interpret that in their language is they want all guns banned. That's it, pure and simple. And the incremental way that they go about it uh, is 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 their modus operandi. Uh, you look at the uh, uh, look at their briefs in the in the Supreme Court in the in the McDonald cases in the Heller cases. Uh, they clearly uh, uh, stated in those briefs that. There was no individual right to keep and own mm-hmm. uh, firearms. I mean, that tells their true colors, and they submitted those briefs uh, uh, under oath as an officer of the court. Uh, absolutely, and you know it's interesting, Jim. You're not the only person who's noted this. In fact, uh, strange bedfellows. There was a Bloomberg.com columnist, uh, uh, Jeffrey Goldberg, who wrote a piece uh, today that that. He made a statement. He said, you know, the gun control advocates, and I'm paraphrasing here, he said, but they're they're nibbling at the edges. Now, here's somebody who actually supports gun control, Jeffrey Goldberg, saying this. And, and, and his objection to the gun control groups was that they aren't being bold enough. They should just go out and say, we don't need a Second Amendment anymore. We need to try to repeal the Second Amendment. Uh, I'll give Jeffrey Goldberg credit for, you know, being honest here, because one of the things that you've been pointing out is a, a fundamental dishonesty and inability for a lot of gun control advocates to actually say what it is that they want. They say what they want right now, uh, but you know darn well if, uh, uh, you know, we were to pass a, uh, a, a, a semi-auto ban, um, these groups wouldn't fold up shop. 
if, 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 Congress the, if Congress had passed all of the gun control provisions that the president had called for, it's not like mayors against illegal guns would have said, well, our job now is done and, and we're going away. There's nothing more that we well, can do. Well, they didn't do that uh, from 94 to 2004 when the Brady Bill uh, uh, was enacted. Uh, they went from there to, uh, to more draconian uh, uh, so-called... Uh, 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 legislative fixes uh, on on uh, on magazines, on magazine capacity, on on all of these other issues. So uh, you, you know, it 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 never stops. And uh, it, to sit there and say that uh, that 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 well, we're you know we're we're dealing now with uh, with mainstream issues because the court has decided. Uh, in the Heller case, that it is an individual right, and, and you can't deprive people of their guns. Yet they're so disingenuous and, and dishonest, they, they they go about fighting that uh, incrementally, where they where they uh, support the uh, the confiscation uh, programs, just like uh, the President Obama does, that they had in Australia and in uh, 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 in, 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 in somewhat in the in the uh, uh, Canada and uh, uh, England, uh, both uh, with their registration and then their confiscation of firearms. I mean, that's that's the ultimate goal. Talking with uh, Jim Porter, the president of the National Rifle Association, and uh, Jim, you know, we've seen a lot of headlines indicating that in 2014 uh, the gun control fight expected to move to the state. Certainly. You know, gun control average is going to try what they, uh, what they can to get through Congress, but uh, it's pretty clear as well that uh, uh, really, you know, states all across this country are going to see a big push by gun control advocates uh, emboldened by what they see as success in places like New York State and Colorado and Connecticut. Well, I think the recall election in Colorado told the true story about what the what the uh, uh, what the mainstream in this country and the voters in this country and these various states are interested in? Uh, clearly, no, uh, the, the overwhelming majority of people are not interested in any more uh, gun laws. They're interested in in crime prevention, and they're also interested in doing something about the uh, the, the problems that uh, we have in our mental health system. But uh, the 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 uh, it's. It's, uh, it's antiquated to continue pounding at passing laws that have no effect on stopping crime. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, that's the thing. I think as Americans, regardless of where we stand on the gun control issue, we all want to see this country continue to become a better place, continue to become a safer place. Uh, and more and more, Jim, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing a recognition, even among some of the mainstream media, a simple acknowledgment that the policies that gun control advocates are calling for uh, would not have made a difference in a lot of these violent crimes, and that there needs to be a, uh, a new focus, another direction, and that, the, uh, the again, it's the policies that the gun control advocates are calling for. Uh, they just don't work. Well, I mean, any, any, anyone that's, that uh, looks at this honestly and forthrightly can see that none of these uh, laws that were uh, that have been suggested and, and, and have been passed in some of these states, uh, would have had any effect on on uh, stopping or, or predominating these these terrible tragedies, and the makers and the supporters of those laws, including Mayor Bloomberg and President Obama and Vice President Joe Biden, have admitted that that they would have had no effect on these terrible uh, terrible tragedies. But look at the recent. Uh, situation you had there in uh, again in Colorado, where mm -hmm. you had an armed uh, uh, officer in the school, and uh, uh, he clearly stopped uh, a tragedy from occurring. Uh, absolutely, and the uh, sheriff has uh, uh, praised that deputy who was there as part of a uh, school resource team uh, for his actions. Listen, Jim, we've got to run, but uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on the program, sir. Have right. a very Merry Christmas. And I uh, look forward to talking again soon. You too, Cam, and uh, you have a Merry Christmas, and uh, uh, thank you for having me on.